Hello everyone. Today I've got a Kicking Horse brand welder on the bench. This is the A220, which is a tiny 240 volt welder that can supposedly provide 220 amps of output at a 25% duty cycle. They proudly proclaim that this welder is the most powerful in its class, and they really push the fact that it can do 220 amps of output, weld 318 steel in a single pass, and run with a 316 electrode with no problem. Well, I just happen to have some 316 inch electrodes, so we'll find out if that's true. The bold amperage claim is one reason why I decided to try this welder, but the other reason is that it seems fairly unique. The internal build is quite different from most of the cheap Chinese welders I've looked at. It has fully potted control boards, and just the overall construction inside is very different from what I'm used to seeing. It doesn't really look like a 220 amp design, but hey, I'm content to be proven wrong, even if I don't expect to be. The single fan that's in there does push a surprising amount of air. I have powered it up already. And all the heat sinks and everything are designed to kind of create a bit of a wind tunnel design. And the capacitors are right down in that airflow, so that's nice to see. It has bolted connections, copper conductors, and overall there's really not much to dislike here. It is a pretty simple design. The input power comes straight to the rectifier and then from there into this uh, potted inverter board here. So clearly no power factor correction or kind of any input filtering, anything like that, because it's converted straight to DC before it goes into the board. But otherwise, it's honestly a pretty clean, simple design. So if it actually does what it says and is reliable, I think it's a pretty slick little machine, actually. This welder is 240 volts only. I mean, it's designed just only to work on 240 volt input, but Kicking Horse also sells a 120 volt powered version, which has 100 amps max output at a 30% duty cycle. It's the same size, and based on the pictures on their website, the internal build looks pretty much identical as well. This isn't the cheapest welder out there at $259, but it is relatively cheap for a 220 amp welder, if it can really do 220 amps. The cables it comes with are aluminum conductors with the same, you know, kind of crappy insulation that a lot of these types of welders come with. They are also just under five feet long. Combine that with a relatively short power cord and there's a fair chance you're gonna need an extension cord with this welder. The work clamp and electrode holder are nothing special, but they're fine. I imagine they would heat up pretty good if you actually ran 220 amps through them for a couple minutes but for typical stuff, they should work okay. The welder is very simple, just has an analog knob to adjust output and a power switch on the back. Just a simple, straightforward stick welder. So let's put the case back on, fire it up, and see how it does. Well, I stand corrected. This tiny welder actually does what it claims to do, and that's not something I can always say when testing cheap stick welders. The first thing I did was crank the welder all the way up and grab a 316 7018. I figured, why mess around? Let's just go for it. And to my genuine surprise, it lit right up and ran fine. This welder actually puts out 220 amps. And not only does it run a 316 7018 just fine, but I was surprised at how easily it started. Some welders seem to have more difficulty starting a rod when maxed out, but this machine starts a 316 7018 as easily as it starts a 1 8 7018. I didn't push the welder for the full 25% duty cycle, but I did run a full 3 16 rod at 220 amps and had no problems. The air coming out the front of the welder was a bit warmer than ambient when I finished, but it wasn't alarmingly hot and it's not surprising that it would heat up a little. I'm still a bit hesitant to actually run at 220 amps for two and a half minutes straight, but the fact that this tiny welder can burn a 3 16 7018 rod at 220 amps is pretty impressive. The amperage output doesn't exactly match the dial at various outputs. Set at 160 gave more like 180. Set at 120 it provided more like 140. And set at just over 80 amps, it was actually pretty close. So it's not perfect, but it's not terrible either, and it will at least get you in the ballpark. Amp draw when maxed out is around 40 amps. For 220 amps of output, that's not too bad. A welder with proper power factor correction would draw less, but I've seen worse as well. No surprise, it runs most rods just fine. However, it doesn't do great with 6010. 
It's definitely not the worst performance with 6010 that I've seen. It does run it, which is more than I can say for some welders, but I still probably wouldn't recommend this welder for someone who needs good 6010 performance. For anyone curious, I did check the open circuit voltage of this welder, and it was 87 volts. Really, there's not a whole lot more to say. The fan runs all the time, and it's a bit loud, but not overly bothersome. The length of the cables is probably the biggest annoyance. The power cord is only four feet long, and the included cables are under five feet. But this tiny welder seems reasonably well built inside. It's super lightweight and portable, and despite the tiny size, it is actually capable of 220 amps of output like they claim. I can't say how well it will hold up long term, and it's not the very cheapest thing out there. But as long as it has the features and capabilities that match your needs, you could do a lot worse. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.